So DeepSeek has been grabbing headlines for a couple of reasons. First, they just released a new multimodal AI model family called Janus Pro. This model supposedly beats OpenAI's Dolly 3 and some other big names like Pixar Alpha and Emu 3 Gen on benchmarks like Gen Evel and DPG Bench. If you know anything about AI benchmarks, you know those are important for measuring how good models are at tasks like image generation and image understanding. And here's the kicker. The biggest version of Janus Pro, known as Janus Pro 7B, seems to outperform those well-known models, at least according to DeepSeek's own internal tests. Now, just days before releasing Janus Pro, DeepSeek made headlines with their R1 language model. That's the one that got people worked up because it apparently matched O1's performance. But get this. While costing only around five or six million dollars to develop, compare that to the billions that big AI labs in Silicon Valley are spending, it's no wonder the entire industry started wondering, are we all overpaying for AI development? Could the next big breakthroughs be coming from smaller outfits with fresh ideas on how to train these systems? Since DeepSeek is based in Hangzhou, China, you can imagine the political and economic angles here. There's talk about how U.S. export controls on advanced chips, particularly from NVIDIA, are meant to slow down Chinese AI progress. Yet DeepSeek claims they used NVIDIA's H800 chips for training, which are technically less powerful than the super high-end chips blocked by the U.S. But they still achieved O1-like results. That's a huge statement that calls into question all these big expensive strategies used by American labs. Let's pause to address a little fiasco that happened recently. DeepSeek apparently got hit by a cyber attack right as everyone started flocking to their AI assistant app. This was around the same time it reached the top of the Apple App Store's free applications list in the United States. So you can picture the scenario. A new AI releases, quickly becomes super popular, the website crashes, then they announce a temporary limit on registrations due to a hacking attempt. It's dramatic, right? The hype is real, but clearly it's also attracting some unwanted attention. <laughs> okay, back to the Janus Pro model. DeepSeek touts it as a unified transformer architecture that can do all sorts of things. Image generation up to 768x, 768 resolution, image analysis, and text-based tasks. That's a big deal because a lot of AI models specialize in just one thing, like text generation or image generation. Yanis Pro is going for that all-in-one approach. It's similar to how GPT-4 can look at images like GPT-4 Vision, but here we've got an entirely open source approach. DeepSeek put the model's code and weights up on Hugging Face for anyone to download right away. That's in stark contrast to companies like OpenAI that keep everything behind closed doors and proprietary APIs. Now, how good is Janus Pro really? The model is offered in different sizes, from 1 billion parameters all the way up to 7 billion. The 7B version is the flagship, and apparently the one that competes with Dolly 3. The user community has tested it in a bunch of ways. For example, people tried analyzing images with Janus Pro to see how accurately it could describe objects, relationships between them, and any implied meanings. It did well at describing straightforward things, like the position of objects or their appearance, but it kind of fell short when deeper reasoning was required. Think about an illustration meant to convey a metaphor. Janus Pro basically gave a literal description, but didn't interpret the symbolic message. GPT-4 Vision, on the other hand, was able to pick up the deeper meaning. On the image generation side, Janus Pro can produce decent images, but might struggle in certain areas like overall sharpness or artistic flair, compared to specialized state-of-the-art image models that are constantly being fine-tuned by huge communities like Stable Diffusion's various fine-tunes. Janus Pro's advantage seems to be versatility more than absolutely top-tier visuals. One interesting test, Someone prompted Janus Pro and standard SDXL for a cute baby fox in an autumn scene. And Janus Pro did nail the baby part better. But SDXL gave a crisper, more detailed image. So it's a trade-off. Janus Pro was more faithful to the prompt, while SDXL was better at generating a polished look. A crucial point is that DeepSeek's approach to open sourcing the model means the community can possibly fine-tune it to higher quality. 
We've seen that happen with other open source models. People out there can tinker, apply specialized data sets, improve the code, and basically push the model to new heights. DeepSeek's official space on Hugging Face is apparently not active yet, so some individuals have set up their own spaces to let others test Janus 7b. Just be careful that you're actually using the 7b version and not some smaller 1.5b build mislabeled as 7b, because that's definitely going to lead to disappointment. Now let's discuss the meltdown that happened in the stock market. As soon as DeepSeek's success story became headline news, especially the part about building a GPT-4-like system with a fraction of the cost, tech stocks took a hit. NVIDIA's shares reportedly plummeted, causing a huge dip in market value, like $600 billion in a single day, which is enormous. The logic here is that if you don't need the most cutting edge chips to train a top tier AI model, maybe NVIDIA's unstoppable growth path is not so unstoppable after all. People started questioning whether the AI investment arms race is misguided if a Chinese startup can replicate results at a 10th of the usual cost. Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, chimed in on social media, basically saying he's impressed by DeepSeek's achievements, but that OpenAI plans to respond with even better models. He also said that if anything, they're going to invest more in computing resources. In other words, OpenAI is not backing down from its big spending approach. Remember, they have partnerships with Microsoft, who's poured billions into OpenAI's ecosystem. Plus, they're planning massive data center expansions. Another interesting twist came from the White House. President Trump, yes, that President Trump, commented that the release of DeepSeek AI from a Chinese company should be a wake-up call for our industries that we need to be laser-focused on competing to win. He talked about unleashing American tech companies to ensure the U.S. continues to dominate the field. That's a pretty big statement, especially amid the ongoing debates about restricting chip exports to China. But then you have this Chinese company just sidestepping those restrictions by using whatever resources are still available to them. That's definitely fueling the conversation about how well these export controls are really working. DeepSeek's background is also kind of mysterious. They've only been around since 2023 and are headquartered in Hangzhou. Big Chinese players like Baidu released large language models a while ago, but no Chinese model up until now has caught the attention of the US tech community quite like DeepSeek. Some critics worry about possible security risks. The question arises, could DeepSeek be closely tied to the Chinese government in ways that compromise user data or lead to censorship? Some folks have reported that DeepSeek's AI assistant won't answer questions about the Chinese government or President Xi Jinping. That's led to speculation about how open or free it actually is when it comes to certain topics. Nevertheless, in just a couple of weeks, DeepSeek's AI assistant soared to the top of Apple's App Store in the US, surpassing even ChatGPT as the top rated free application. Think about how wild that is they basically grabbed the AI chatbot crown in a matter of days. The surge in popularity caused such high demand that it triggered serious outages on DeepSeek's site. They had to fix issues with their application programming interface and user logins, reportedly their longest downtime in about 90 days. Although sudden viral apps often experience these short-term meltdowns, it definitely shows there's real market interest. Something else that's shaking investors, the assumption that you need billions of dollars and thousands of the absolute best NVIDIA chips to train competitive AI might be wrong. At least that's what DeepSeek is suggesting. And when the viral apps went there using their XLA passwords like Rice Crisps that are customizable emits, OpenAI is not the only one in the crosshairs. Anthropic, Meta, Google, Amazon, they've all allocated massive budgets for AI R&D and infrastructure. Microsoft, Meta, Alphabet, Amazon, and Oracle alone are poised to spend around $310 billion in 2025, part of which is for AI data centers. Meanwhile, OpenAI teased an eye-popping plan to spend up to $500 billion to build out a global network of data centers. But if DeepSeek can do it for under $10 million, maybe these spending sprees are overkill. Now, let's be fair. Some people doubt DeepSeek's numbers. The company said they only spent about $5.6 million on training their V3 model, but that's just the final training pass. That might not reflect all the prior experiments and data curation that went into it. Still, 
Even if the total cost was two, three, or five times that, it might still be significantly lower than what we hear from American tech giants. And that's a big question. How is that even possible? DeepSeek cites new training techniques, such as methods that let the model focus only on the most relevant sections of data at a given time, thereby saving a lot of computing resources. They also say they used open source projects from Alibaba and Meta as a springboard, fine tuning them to create their final product. Not everyone is thrilled that they essentially piggybacked on open source frameworks from the West, but that's how open source works. Once the code is out there, any capable group can adapt it. Within Meta, there's apparently some frustration. People are like, we have thousands of the world's best researchers and a ton of money, so how did we get beat to a big breakthrough by a smaller company with fewer resources? Mark Zuckerberg has been a proponent of open source, releasing models like Llama, and ironically, Llama might have helped DeepSeek get to where they are faster. We also have folks like UC Berkeley's Stuart Russell saying this arms race to reach artificial general intelligence is more dangerous than, say, the space race because we're pushing towards potentially super intelligent systems we don't fully control. Even some AI company CEOs themselves have hinted at existential risks, so it's definitely raising eyebrows that a relatively unknown player is accelerating the timeline. At the end of the day, DeepSeek is now a name everyone's talking about. <laughs> They're giving us Janus Pro for multimodal tasks, image generation, image analysis, and text-based conversation, plus their R1 model competing with GPT-4 on reasoning. It's all open source, so who knows what improvements the community will add. Meanwhile, the bigger question is, will this force big tech to change course and focus on more efficient, cost-official techniques? OpenAI's Sam Altman basically said, we'll release better stuff soon, don't worry, while also doubling down on the importance of enormous computing resources. Meta's hinting that you still need all that muscle if you're going to serve billions of people worldwide. So maybe it's not just about training the model, but also about deploying it at a massive scale. But one thing's for sure, the genie's out of the bottle. DeepSeek's sudden rise is a reality check. For all the billions poured into AI by West Coast giants, maybe smaller, agile teams can keep pace if they're clever with their methods. And it's not just hype. This has real impact on stock prices, investment trends, and even how governments think about export controls. If a Chinese lab can produce GPT-level models without top-of-the-line chips, it changes the entire conversation around AI dominance. So that's the overview. Pretty wild times in the AI world, right? We've got this fresh open source approach from DeepSeek that's apparently setting new efficiency standards. We have the giant US tech companies recalibrating, or at least taking notice. We have the stock market reacting, governments stepping in, and the open source community possibly uniting around these new models. I'm curious what you all think. Is DeepSeek's success sustainable or is this just a flash in the pan? Will we see more small teams out innovating the big players with a fraction of the budgets? Or will the open AIs and metas of the world always have the upper hand with their colossal resources? Anyway, that's it for this deep dive. If you found it informative, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more AI updates. Let me know in the comments which angle of the story intrigues you the most. Thanks for hanging out and I'll catch you in the next one.